So I recently realized that I'd been designing my blog page using Bricks Builder the complete wrong way. Now to show you what I mean, here we are on my website and this is my homepage. So if I click up here, WordPress tutorials and tips, this is my blog page. So if I right click and I go inspect element, we can see down here the body class has blog. So I know that this is in fact my blog page. Now if we go up and we click on WordPress product reviews, these are, is a custom post type. So this is a post type archive design. So if I right click and go inspect, element, we can see that this is a post type archive page for this post type here, my reviews post type. Now, the third thing that I want to show you is if I go up to here to the search bar and we go to bricks and we search for this, we land on my search results page. And if we go down here and we right click and inspect element here, you can see that this is my search results template. So across my website, I have three different things, my search results, my post type archives and my blog page. And I want all those layouts to look exactly the same. Now in Bricks Builder, if you're going out and you're wanting this same effect throughout your website, but you're currently managing multiple templates to achieve this, this is what this video is about today. Because now in my website, I can go in and update the one Bricks template and it updates all those three places in my website. And it is so easy. So using Bricks Builder, you don't have to go out and design your post type archive template and then design your blog page and then design your search results. And to get them looking the same, you're copying and pasting the template from one to the other to the other. You don't have to do that. And this is what this video is about. So if this sounds stupid and you're like, Grant, how did you not know this? Drop a comment below and say, Grant, you're an idiot. This is six weeks you've been using Bricks Builder and this was so obvious because I only just realized today and it just makes so much sense. And it's just gonna make building websites with Bricks Builder just so much simpler going forward. So let's get into the video today, but don't forget to tell me in the comments below if you already knew this. So here I am on my staging website and this is a custom post type archive. So if we go to the back end of my website and we go down. So I use this plugin here, custom post types UI, and then I've added a post type. So if we go into here and then we click on edit post types, then select product reviews up here. You can see that this is my post type slug here. And then if we look for the archive URL where it is here. So, so you can see it has an archive page and it's forward slash reviews. And then up the top here under product reviews, if we go to all product reviews, you can see here are all my product reviews. So when I was going out and building my website, I knew that I wanted to build my archive page to look a certain way. And more often than not, just how I build websites, I'm very basic with how I build them. All my archive pages look exactly the same. They take on the same layout. So how I would go and set this up with Bricks Builder previously is as follows. I would go to Bricks Builder and I would go to Bricks and then Templates. And then I would go Add New and I would call this Archive Default uh, Template Design, something like that. And then I, over here, I would select it's an archive and then I would go publish. Then I would go edit with bricks. So I'm going to quickly build a post type archive template here. So let's go to the div. We'll add that in there. And then let's make this the query loop like this. And then inside there, we're going to add the, and then in here we can add the post title. We can add the excerpt and then we could do a, and then on the excerpt over here, we could go read more like that. Let's go to style layout and we might make this 50 pixels padding around. And then we're going to give it the background and we're going to make this white like that. And we're going to make it 20 pixels separated. And then let's go ahead and over here, let's just change this. So this is going to be like a H2. And then here we're going to add some spacing up here just to separate that out a little bit. So I'm just going to leave that there because I really want to focus on what I'm trying to show you in this video. So we're not going to design anything else here for this archive template. But what I want to do is click save up here and then go back to our product reviews post type, which is here. And I'm just going to refresh the page now and you can see that nothing changes. That's because we haven't applied this template under any conditions. So what is this template here that's currently taking effect? If we go back to bricks and then templates and we search for archive, these are the ones that we have here. This is the one that we just created. And then this is the table design that's currently taken effect. If you want to see how to go and set up a table design like I have here currently, where you can list all your posts on the page on the archive page. And then up here you can search and it filters like that. I think it's a very clever way to display your post in an archive format, but I just find this table layout is very good for archive templates. Here I am on my live website under WordPress tutorials, and you can see that all my blog posts are 
output as a table here and you can filter up here. So if I go bricks like that, I can see all the bricks posts. So I feel like it's very user friendly, WooCommerce, WooFunnels. I just find it works really good from a UI perspective. And then I feel like search engines as well, it's just a lot easier for them to index your post because they just go to this one page with all your blog posts listed there and there's no featured images or anything. So I feel like the page loads super fast. So all around, I just think this is a really good layout. I'm going to show you how I went and set this up in one of my upcoming videos. So make sure you subscribe if you're not already so you can see how I did this in case you want to do something like this for yourself. But to stay on track, I'm going to go ahead and disable this template uh, for the table. So if we go back here, this is at layout. So I'm just going to go ahead and trash it. And now we only have our one there. If I go back and refresh the page here, you can see that it's just goobly goop. It's just defaulted to whatever Bricks does out of the box. So let's go ahead and apply the template that we created. So let's click over to here and then we need to go to settings and then we need to go to template settings conditions and we're going to apply this to all archives and then I'll go to all archives and then I'll click save and then we'll go back and I'm just going to refresh this now and that's taken on our design. So there it is there for our custom post type. So if I right click and I inspect element, we can see this is the post type archive for my reviews post type. So now that we've done that, I want to discuss why I'm making this video and it's for this reason, even though we've gone out and we've designed this layout and applied it to all of our archives throughout our whole entire website, you might know this, you might not know this. If we go up to our our blog page, which is up here, you can see that that hasn't taken effect. So even though there's blog posts in our website and we set a default template for our archive pages, it's not affecting our blog page. Now, if I right click and go to inspect element, I can see that I actually haven't set this as my blog page. So as you might know, to do that, we go back to our dashboard and then we go to settings and then we go to reading. And then here, my post page or my blog page is going to be blog. And then I'll go down and click save changes. And now if we go back and refresh the page and close this, so now it looks like this. So you can see that even though we have our default archive wanting to look like this, applying to all of our archives, our blog looks like this. And this is actually the layout that the Bricks theme does out of the box for archive pages. So that's why this blog page doesn't look the same as this one here. So how do we get our blog and our archive pages looking the same? So here's what I was doing previously. If I go to the blog page, which looks like this, I would go edit with bricks. And then in the editor, I would go back to my post type archive layout and I would go up here and I would copy this layout from here. And then I would go to my blog, which is here. And then I would paste it there. And now I have that layout copied and pasted there. So I would save that. And now if I preview on the front end, so if we go to my archive here for my product reviews, it looks like this. And then if I click to go to my blog page, it looks like this. So now we've managed to match our archive page and our blog page to look the same. But under the surface, what's actually happening is, again, we have our template here that we've designed and under settings and then template settings and then conditions, we're applying it to all of our archives. And then we also have our blog design, but we actually have two different designs. So the problem with that is if I go into here and I go, oh, actually, I want to change this read more to a button. And I go up to here and go button and I add the button and then I want to get rid of this excerpt text so I could do something like that and then the button I could get rid of it like this and then the URL I'm going to make it link to the post so uh, dynamic data and then here I'm going to go to post link like that and we'll give it a margin while we're here like that and I click save now if I go back to the front end of my website and I click to go to my post type archive you can see that looks good but then if I go to my blog page you can see that that button isn't there so to do that I would need to edit with bricks builder and then I would remove all from up there and then I would go to my archive layout and then I would copy from here, go back to there. I would paste those changes into there for the blog. I would click save. And now if I go back to the front end and I go to the archive, I've got the button there. And if I go to the blog page, I've got the button there as well. So you can see that it's quite easy, but again, you're copying and pasting and you're trying to manage two different templates. So what I realized, and again, you might see where I'm going with this is you don't need to go and copy and paste and manage two different templates. You can do the following. Let's go ahead and edit with Brick 
Bricks Builder, the blog page. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete everything from this template and I'm going to save this. And then we're going to view this on the front end. And this is my blog template. So we're back to the default layout that the Bricks theme has. And then on the archive page, we have the layout that we want. So what we can do is we can go edit with Bricks and we can edit the archive template that's applied to here. And then what we can do is go to settings and then template settings conditions. And here we can add a condition. If you scroll down, we can do individual at the bottom. And then here we need to write blog. Now, what I found is sometimes it doesn't come up here, my blog page. I'm not quite sure why. So what I do is we, if we just save this, let's go back to our admin and I'm going to go to pages. And then there's my blog. I just do a quick edit and I just write some random word like bicycle and I go update. Then I go back to the archive template. So settings, template settings, conditions. And then we want to add a condition and we're going to go individual. And then here, then I search for bicycle. So there it is there. So I'll click on that and then I go save. And now that that's saved, if we go back to the blog page and I reload the page here, you can see that that has taken the effect of our archive template. So now if we go and edit this template, let's just say we want to change this button color and we want to change this to a different button style. So maybe we want to make this the secondary color, the blue color. I'll click save, go back here. So this is our blog. So if I refresh the page, these buttons are blue. And if we go to the archive up here, you can see that this is blue as well. So if you're like me and you're constantly designing your blog page to look like your post type archive pages, then this is a very handy tip. I feel like that I didn't know. But again, if you knew this already, leave a comment below and let me know how stupid I am for not realizing this. Now, another thing that I've realized this week is that if we go up to here and I search for bricks builder in my search bar and I search, I get this layout here. So if we right click and go inspect element, we can see that this is a search results template, but this is getting the default layout of the bricks theme for an archive. So what's happening here? So we've been able to merge our custom post type archive and blog into the one template, but we can also do that for our search results. And I wanted to make this video because it can be a little bit confusing because of this fact. If you go up to here and you go to bricks and you go to templates and you click on add new, and then here we type search results, and then over here under template type, if I click on this, we have archive, but we also have search results. So if I click onto this and we go save or update, and then I go edit with bricks, and now I'm editing the search results template. I was having a look at the elements that are here under the search. So these are elements specific to when you select that search results template type, these get output. And these look exactly the same as the archive elements that you get. So for example, if we go back to the dashboard and then I go to bricks and I go to template, and we search for the archive, which is this one here. So if I go edit with bricks and have a look at what we get in here, post title, excerpt, metadata. So these here look the same as the search results. And so you might think if you get the same elements there in a search results template type as an archive template type, why would you go and use the search results? And you might think because that only applies to search results. But here's the funny thing. If we go back to our archive template, which is this one here, and I go to settings and then we go to template settings conditions and then we go add a condition and then we click up to here. We can select search results here so it affects search results with this template. So if I go to the front end of my website and I search for Bricks Builder and I search and we land on this output, which again is the Bricks theme default for the archives, it looks like that. All we need to do is go back to here and I've selected to apply to search results. I'll go save. And then if we go back here and refresh the page, now that's taking on that look. So using that, if we go back and look at this, we've designed all our custom post type archives. We've designed our blog page layout and we've designed our search results all to use this one template and any changes we need to make, we update in this one template and it updates everywhere else. So based on that, uh, I don't really think that you need to select search results anywhere. If you can think of any other reason as to why you would need to use this, let me know in the comments below. So after playing around with this to keep things as simple as possible for me, at least this is the way that I'm going to approach building a website with bricks in the future is to just go out and under templates. So we go bricks and templates, the templates that I'll create are like your header, your footer, your single post layout. But for everything else like archives, I will just be going add new and I would just say archives up here. And then I would select that this is an archive type. 
like that. And then I would use conditions to affect all the different parts of my websites, including search results and everything. Even if I wanted to have a search results template that looked different from my archives, I mean, you could easily just come into here and say search results like that, but then you could still select archive template type here and then set it to affect under the conditions your search results. You're keeping things really easy. I'm just going to use moving forward header, footer, single, section, and archive. And then you have your error. But yeah, I'm not sure when you'd use this search results. So, so definitely let me know in the comments below if you already knew this. And if you want to learn more about Bricks Builder and basically me playing around with it for the last month and a bit, what I've learned, I'm going to leave a link here to my Bricks Builder review where I just go through my favorite features, how I'm using them and show you sort of the best ways that I've found to use all those features. So I'm going to put that on the screen now and I'll see you guys in that video. Thank <laughs> you.